throne has been reached. And Jesus said, go home because you can't know. You don't find anything like that in the Bible. In fact, you find that the whole of Matthew 24 and the whole of Matthew 25 is given to the understanding of the sign and the preparation to meet the limit generation. And my friends, you and I are in that generation today. He said, tell us, when shall these things be? They said, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus gave them clear signs of when they will reach the limit. He said, there will be wars and rumors of wars. He said there will be nation that would rise against nation, political unrest. He said there will be earthquakes in diverse places, environmental devastation, and all of these are taking place just as Jesus said. Am I right or wrong? We see it like we've never seen it before. But my brothers and my sisters, listen. Jesus said in the midst of all that, there are going to be some great things we would see. In fact, in verse 32. What book did I say? Verse 32. Chapter, uh, 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 chapter 24, Matthew 24. And verse 32, the Bible says, let's read that together. The Bible says, Now learn a parable of the what? Fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, ye know that what? Summer is nigh. Now in Bahamas, you may not get the full view of that, but if you visit it somewhere else where it gets cold, they tell me it doesn't get too cold here. Every time it's beautiful. Am I right? And that's a blessing in some ways. Amen. Now, in some ways, it's not a blessing. Before it's over, I'll tell you why, but that's another story. But I'll tell you this, it, it, in some places where it gets cold, we can get so cold that what happens to leaves on the tree? They fall off in the winter. But when the spring comes back around, guess what happens to those leaves? You know what happens? The leaves spring back and come on the tree. Now, my brothers and sisters, when that happens, nobody in America goes knocking on doors and going to his neighbor, Neighbor, what mean the leaves on my tree? Do they know what the leaves mean? Yes, they know what season it is. They know that winter has turned to spring and is moving to summer. They know the time of the season by looking at those events. And Jesus took this common, practical illustration of the conditions of life and he used it to teach a deep spiritual lesson. In fact, in verse 33, the Bible says, So likewise. In other words, the same way you knew. You didn't guess that summer was there. The same way you knew the season by looking at the signs. So likewise ye, when ye shall see how much. Now you got to get this. You better write this down in your paper. Oh, this is important as we get ready to close. When you shall see what? All these things. What was the three words? When you should see, what's the next three words? All these. Write that down. Circle it. It's important. It says, when you shall see all these things, know that it is what? Near. In other words, you're getting ready to reach the limit. In other words, when you see all these things, know that you're near the limit. Know that you're near the end when you see it. Know that you're in the last generation, that you're near it when you see it. Know that you're near. How near does the Bible say we can know it? By looking at the signs. What does it say? How near? Now, I don't hear the rest of you. You know what? I'm going to tell somebody to lock these doors. We're not going anywhere tonight. Amen? Come on, talk to me. Look what the Bible says. We're studying. You've got to get it. It says, know that it is near. How near? Even... At the door. The Bible says when we see all these things to know that it is near, even at the doors, the Bible says we can know that it is near. Now, what does it mean to be at the door? The Bible says that when we see all these things, we can know that we were at the door. Now, my brothers and sisters, how near does it mean when we say at the door? How near is that? That's close. Yes, that's near. We have to know how close that is. You see, when the Bible says we can know it's near, we can know. We, we not, must not be guessing. We must know, and we must let the Bible explain itself. You see, when you study the Bible, you must study it line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. You must let the Bible explain itself. If I tell you what near is, it doesn't make sense. Because I can be wrong. Am I right or right? Right, right or wrong? I can be wrong. Am I right? But if the Bible tells us what near is, the Bible doesn't make a mistake. So what does it mean when the Bible says that it is near? The Bible says how near? Even at the... So my question tonight is, what does it mean to be at the door? The Bible tells us. Jesus tells us in the next verse. In verses 34. What's the first word of verse 34? Now I'm going to ask you a question about verily before we read. 
does barely change the subject. No, it doesn't. If you study the Bible, anywhere in the Bible, when you study verily, verily does not change the subject. In fact, you remember when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus. And Jesus told Nicodemus, after Nicodemus tried to flatter, listen, Jesus was a straight preacher. Jesus wasn't flattered. Jesus, he meant, oh, we know you're a teacher sent by God. Jesus said, you must be born again. All of a sudden, Nicodemus said, can a man go back into his father? You know, it's amazing how philosophical we can be when we want to get away from truth. Oh, yes, I know. You know what the end is, everyone else. But all of a sudden, you don't know what the end is when it comes to the truth. So philosophically, Nicodemus said, can I go back? He knew what God, Jesus, meant. Jesus didn't play around with him either. Jesus looked straight him in the eyes and Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a man is born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. Did Jesus change the subject? No. That verily stated more emphatically. That verily stated more clearly. That verily made it plain. What do you mean? So the Bible says in Matthew 24, Jesus said, when you see it, know that I'm near. Know that I'm near. How near Jesus? Even at the door. Well, I don't know what that means. What does it mean to be even at the door? Jesus said, verily, emphatically, let me make it plain if you don't understand it. What it means is this, verily I say unto you that, what does it say? This generation, shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Question, is that the first generation or the last generation? Is that the first generation or the limit generation? Jesus said, you can know when you see the signs. When you come near, how near? When you reach the door. When is the door? What does that mean? Jesus said, you can know the generation that's going to reach the limit. And my question tonight is, did Jesus ever get to the door? We're going to prove this week. I'm going to tell you tonight, but we're going to prove it this week, that Jesus got to the door in 2008. What year did I say? And You better write that down because we've got to prove this. 2008, Jesus got to the door. Now, my brothers and sisters, here in Bahamas, you should know because something happened here in 2008. Prophetic! Something happened in Bahamas 2008. I'm going to tell you something. Something's getting ready to happen in 2012 too. I'm going to tell you something. Something's getting ready to shake this country to its very foundation. And all of the buildings is getting ready to start crumbling down. You think that it's getting ready to get better. I'm going to show you something. A storm is coming. And by the grace of God, God is saying that He wants us to prepare. Something happened in 2008 that's getting ready to come to an end. Now, my brothers and sisters, something happened that proves that we got to the door. But the Bible says, when we reach the door, you can know that this generation, the generation that sees me come to the door, this generation shall not pass Till all these things be, we're going to prove that we reached that generation already. Everyone sitting here in this room has reached that generation. We're here. In 2008 was four years ago. We need to understand what has happened as of 2012. My friends, we have almost reached that limit. We don't have much time. And do you know that when the limit is reached, it is going to be too late for the remnant to get ready. We must work for the night is coming. Question. What is the sign... That the limit has been reached. Not that it's near, but what is the sign that the limit generation has come? That's when the limit is going to reach. Jesus said, I'm going to give you a sign. Look what the prophet says. Last day events through 39, look what the prophet says. It says, with unerring accuracy, the infinite one still keeps an account with how many nations? All nations. While his mercy is tendered with cause to repentance, this account will remain open. But when the figures reach a what? In other words, when God reaches the limit, this far and no further. It says, which God has fixed, the ministry of his wrath commences. Last day of verse 40, it says, God keeps a record with the nations. The figures are swelling against them in the books of what? Heaven. And when it shall have become a law that the transgression 
of the first day of the week. What day is the first day of the week? Talk to me, somebody. Sunday. It says, when it shall become a law, what do we call a law that is talking about Sunday? We call it a Sunday law. It says that when it shall become a law, that when a Sunday law shall be met with punishment, then, when, then, when that Sunday law is seen in America, then their cup will be full or the limit will have been reached this far and so what is the sign that we have reached that limit generation is the passing of a Sunday law in America. You know now, listen to me. Years ago when Seventh-day Adventists used to teach that, the world said that's just Seventh-day Adventist talk, but not today. Do you know that anybody in the world can know that Sunday law is coming? You know the atheist knows that Sunday laws are coming. Man don't even believe in God. The politician knows that Sunday law is coming. The religious leaders know that Sunday law is coming. The political leaders know that Sunday law is coming. Every country on the globe knows that Sunday laws are coming. They just don't understand what that means. They see the handwriting on the wall. Let me tell you something. I remember I forget. I always tell this everywhere I go. Somebody says, well, if there's really going to be some Sunday laws, wouldn't they be anywhere? And all I do is throw up, open the papers and start showing all the Sunday laws everywhere. Do you know that Sunday laws are being pushed everywhere in the world? Inspiration says, watch now, I'm going to show you just before we close. Volume 7, 141, the, it says in Inspiration, This earth has almost reached the what? Place where God will permit the destroyer to work his will upon it. The substitution of the laws of men for the law of God. The exaltation by merely human authority of Sunday in place of the Bible Sabbath is the, not the first, but the last act in the drama. It lets us know that the limit has been reached. It lets us know that we're living in the last generation. It lets us know that we have no more time to play. And when that law is passed, the remnant church must already be prepared. My brothers and sisters, we're not hearing this today. We're not ready for this. Our church, we're sleeping. This says that that is getting ready to show us when the substitution becomes universal. Every country in the globe is going to pass this. It's going to be an international law. When this substitution becomes universal, God will reveal Himself. He will arise in His majesty to shake terribly the earth. We must see this Sunday. Is Sunday laws coming all around the world? Time magazine, 2004. It says... Maybe those old blue laws or Sunday laws weren't so crazy what? After all, we see papers talking about Sunday laws, 2004. 2004 it says, why isn't what? Sunday special anymore. 2008, Sunday shopping ban where? And this is not religious papers, this is USA Today. This is worldwide in scope. It says, Sunday laws being coming. Here's the official website. For all of the nations of Europe, the official site for the Europeans all coming together. And on the, on the official site, it says, protection of the work-free Sunday. All over Europe, all over England. I was there doing some meetings, picked this off from the official site. It was before 2009. They were saying that they were pushing to get this by 2009. Do you know, as of 2012, some of this is already into law? Look at what they say, quote, on their official government site. Talking about the parliament, it said that the EU institutions have come to protect Sunday as a weekly rest day. What about Germany? Dutch Whaley. We were over in Germany doing meetings just like this. And they told us, Germany's constitutional court ruled on Tuesday that shop must close when? Sundays. Sunday laws moving here in America. Oregon auto dealers want what? Sunday's off law, 2008. Now, and if anybody knows about the seven-day Sabbath, the Bible Sabbath, it's the Jewish nation, Israel. Am I right? This is July 2011. Government to consider adding Sunday as a day of rest. Can you imagine the Jewish nation who believe in the Old Testament, all of them knowing about the Sabbath, they said they want to add Sunday as a day of rest, and you'll be interested to know why, because the same reason why they're doing it, is going to be the reason why Bahamas does it. Same reason that America does it. The same reason that the country of the world does it. We're going to study it. All around the world we see this. 2012, 
Sunday's off. Is it good for the Jews? 2012, all over the world, Sunday laws are coming and the handwriting is on the wall, but the world does not understand. But those who read and study the books of Daniel and Revelation, they shall understand that this sign means that the limit has been reached. That the world cannot continue. And my brothers and sisters, you know what it says in CNN? CNN. This is from 2012. Faith-based predictions for 2012. To ring in the new year, CNN. Anybody ever heard of CNN? You, have you heard of CNN? To ring in the new year, CNN's belief long asked experts in religion, faith leaders, and secular humanists about how the forces of faith and faithlessness will shape the world in 2012. You won't believe what they said. They said that they believe that the Sunday Sabbath is coming back. They talked about 15 things. And what they said at number 9, they said that the Sabbath will become trendy. The fourth commandment makes it come back and the Sabbath is named the Times Person of the Year. A new movement sweeps the country. They call it themselves 24-6. Worn out by being tethered to the grid 24-7. Sick of being accessible all hours of the day and indaunted by updates, upgrades, and breaking news. Americans finally rebel, demanding we need a day off. And you know what day they're going to want off? They're going to say we need a Sunday law. CNN said they see this coming 2012. Oh, we're going to study some more. I'm going to tell you, the prophet told us about all this. They're on Fox News. 2012, Fox News. It says, let's make what? Sunday. A day of rest. The handwriting's on the wall telling us that the limit's going to reach. I'm going to show us by God's grace from the Word of God, from history, from current events, that my friends, all of this is getting ready to take place, but you and I are not ready. Because when this takes place in this country, do you know something? When this takes place, you know what our church is doing right now? All of the signs everywhere, and the only church, the one church that has the light from heaven, that has the message from the most holy place, that knows the three angels' messages, that have been taught that this time was coming, that church is sleeping when it should be preaching the truth from this time. That church is lying down, loving the slumber, afraid to announce that a time of trouble is going to take place. And God says that somebody must wake up. And I believe that some of those people are in this room tonight. That are going to start going on the radio ways, going on television ways, going on internet, going from door to door, going from house to house. Time to work for the night is coming. We've got to start preparing the world of what is going to take place. What does it mean? When is it coming? How can I prepare? Because when that law is passed, it's going to be too late for the remnant to get ready. My friends, that limit is almost reached. While this is going, you know what's going on with the church? Look what the prophet says. It says, a listless, unfeeling manner presenting the truth will never arouse men and women from their death-like slumber. They must show by their manners and by their acts and words and by their preaching and praying that they believe that Christ is where? At the... We're going to prove that He's at the door. It says, men and women are in the what? Last hours of probation. Yet are careless... You didn't even want to read that, did you? The prophet said, careless and stupid. Dumb. We won't talk about it. We don't understand it. It says we're careless and stupid, and ministers have no power to arouse them. Why not? They are asleep themselves. That's why people don't like the prophet, because the prophet will tell you the truth. Men and ministers, ministers and members of all denominations, and especially of the remnant church, are sleeping right now, loving the slumber. How can a sleeping ministry wake up a sleeping church? It says, they are asleep themselves. Sleeping preachers, preaching to a sleeping people. You can go to church, and you'll see people just sleeping all over, physically and spiritually. And let me tell you something, that sleeping man will never be ready for the coming of Jesus. You know what the devil's doing? The devil is passing out sleeping pills. Sleeping pills. And the minister is giving you a sleeping pill. Don't go to those meetings. Don't study your Bible. Don't listen to the radio. Don't study Daniel, Revelation. Don't understand what's taking place. Don't make revival and reformation and changes. Let me tell you something. The devil is giving you a sleeping pill and you better not swallow it. 
Political leaders are giving you a sleeping pill. Yeah, just give me your money. Get me taxes. Let you know I'm going to build a big road for you. A big city to dwell in. Let you think that everything is going to be alright. Peace and prosperity coming back to the island. But let me tell you something. Peace is not coming. A storm is coming. Time of trouble such as never was. And God says, when will men hear the message that, that, that God is going to send messengers to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people to wake us up before too late? Why? Because the night is coming when no man can work. And I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I want to be ready to meet Jesus. What do you say? Let me just bring it to a close. You know, brothers and sisters, it's so sad. This is the condition of the world. Sleeping. This is the condition of ministers, for the most part, sleeping. This is the condition of the members of the church. And you know it's terrible. We're just like that. I mean, look at the man. You know when a man turns his head to the left, you know he's sleeping. When that man in church turns to the left and that's true, you know he's God. This is where we are. But do you remember in Jesus and Gethsemane, you know what Jesus did? While Jesus was praying, you know what happened to the church? They fell asleep. You know what Jesus did? Jesus started going over to, the, to Peter. He started going over to James and John. He went over to the disciples and he said, Wake up! The night is coming! Wake up! Wake up! And if we're following in the footsteps of Jesus, we must go to our men and brethren and saying, Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Great work! Little time! The night is coming! If ever we're going to get ready, because let me tell you something, all of the talk of getting ready, all of the plans that you're making for the future, all the things that you're doing to try to get ready, if you don't wake up, is just a dream. And people right now are dreaming that they're going to be saved. And they're going to be lost because they won't wake up and get ready. My brothers and sisters, God has brought these meetings so that we can wake up. Do you want to wake up? Oh, brothers and sisters, we have some tremendous things to study. We've just touched the service tonight. I want to give you some more, but I'm going to close right here. Let's bring pen and papers tomorrow. Let's bring Bibles tomorrow. Let's come on time because we're going to study together and we're going to see that we have a great work to accomplish in a little time. This world is getting ready to reach an end and the only thing that is going to save us is a relationship with Jesus Christ. I wonder if there's someone here tonight that says, I want a relationship with Jesus. If there's someone here like that tonight, please God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father... We're thankful for what our ears have heard tonight. That there's a limit. That limit is almost reaching. We're going to prove, Lord, that something happened in 2008. We're at the door. This generation shall not pass. And Lord, we don't know it. We're not ready. Not one person in this room is ready tonight. And Lord, I'm pleading that you would bring every one of us so that we can study, we can prepare, we can, we can come to Jesus. I don't care how sinful we've been, how many mistakes we've made, how far we are, that if we come to Jesus, there is help, there is hope, there is healing. Because the sun is not yet set. There's still an opportunity. In the fact, there's someone here tonight that says, Lord, I, I want this experience with Jesus. I, I want to have this, this new birth experience. I want to love God more than the world. I want this experience that when the storm breaks, that when the night comes, I'm ready to meet Him. If that's your desire, just raise your hand where you are. You may be old, you may be young, but you're raising your hand saying, Lord, when the night comes, I want to be ready. I want to stand. I want to help others to stand. You're raising your hand saying, Lord, this is what I want. Praise God. Oh, Father, you see the lifted hands. Now, I'll supply the fact that there's any, if there was any hand that was not raised, I pray that you would agitate every heart. Don't let anyone go to sleep, Lord, so that every one of us can be ready to meet you. We thank you for this. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.